Bobby Lattimore along with Myron Guyton, Jesse Small, and Chris Guyton. Guys, week 10 is over. What do you think? Well, I'm still a little heated up about the last discussion that somebody and I were having. But well, that's a whole another two weeks away. We'll get to that later. Right. Yep. You saw some outcomes, well, you know, with that. And I think we got a better understanding why, you know, we talked about that Lee County team, you know, which I'm quite sure we got to discuss a little bit. Lee County oh, yeah. Harris. We got a lot to discuss you know, coming but, up uh, with that whole region. It's going to be interesting to see what's coming down. But what happened in week 10, what I saw, guys, I saw a lot of distinctions between where they're going to play in the playoffs now. Right. A lot of separation happened, a lot of wins and losses, a lot of upsets also determined who was going to play where. Still a lot of things got to happen here in week 11. The next two weeks are very, very important here in southwest Georgia as far as the seedings for the playoffs. But we know who's going to make the playoffs right now, don't we? That's right. The cream comes to the top. The cream comes to the top yep. now. You can yeah. see who the top teams are. You know. But I don't think there are really any surprises with the top-tier teams. No. I think it's the guys that we thought would make the playoffs that are not, you know, have a shot, probably not going to make it. You know, teams like Thomasville that I thought had a shot to make it when the season started. Right, um, right. Teams like Bainbridge, who we thought would be a higher seed, mm -hmm. you know, it might be a lower seed. Um, so there's going to be some, some shock. Teams like Pelham that we thought might have a decent year, and they lose to that's, Bergen County now. I mean, that's someone yeah. you thought might have a decent year. And Bakington, who we thought year. might go undefeated. 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 <laughs> <laughs> undefeated. No, that's right. Hey, they you won last Thursday. Right. They won last Thursday. So we'll they, finished they, they finished 500? They finished 500. They finished 500. Four and four, right? That's making progress, right? Yeah, this, 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 many, this many games. This many games. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how many more than <laughs> last year? That's how many more than last year? This many? Uh, this many more. <laughs> that's some so. And I tell you what, even Badwood and, 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 and Brookwood. Now, I, I thought it was going to be a huge blowout, Badwood and Brookwood. Well, I, they took the pedal off the gas in the second half. Oh, Running so. clock, and they took the pedal off the gas. It could have been 70, but... Coach over there at Valwood was very generous, let's just say oh, that. So. Oh. But I'll give Brookwood props. They held in there. I, they, they held on the, Val, the Valwood the first quarter. They stuck in there. But the second quarter, Valwood just put it on and go. And went. I mean, but you look, look at that schedule. Level. I mean, when they beat Westwood, I'm thinking, hey, yeah. this is a real team here. Oh, they got I mean, kids that are right now. Um, and then, of course, I find out who the coach is. Ashley Henderson, former coach at Valdosta, who was at Valwood, who brought a lot of kids over with him. But, but, you know what? Yeah, but it's still, yeah, that's, hey, that's part of the game. I mean, that's part of where you are and what you do. So he's got a good team over there. There's two kids on the offensive line for Valwood. One's going to Georgia next year, and the other one's going to Georgia Southern. So that's academic. where he's got it's, right it's now. Academics. Academics. Yeah. Yeah. It's academics. It's academics. Academics players. Academics. So, <laughs> but that's where they are right there. But a lot of other stuff happening. Caldwell County losing to Valdosta Ooh, this that week. was a surprise. That was a surprise. <laughs> and just the way they were down. You know, they yep. were, like, down. They were way down. They were down 21 they points. They were making a game at the end. Yeah, they, yeah, they were. Yep. Wow, so, was, so, we'll talk about that here pretty soon. Let's take a quick break. When we come back here on the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. Fresh trade-ins everywhere right here at Thomasville Toyota, folks. Look at this Yukon, absolutely gorgeous. Tan leather interior, got the wheels. $9,900 at Thomasville Toyota. 07 Sienna minivan, perfect color, clean, also $9,900. And here's a real SUV, Nissan Xterra. Sale price $9,900, make it $8,900. Tell them I said, Thomasville Toyota, where you drive home happy. At Farm Credit, our roots run deep in this rich Georgia soil. We are the nation's leading provider of credit to farmers and farm businesses. And we know what it takes to grow your business. We've closed more loans on the hood of a pickup truck than some bankers will in a lifetime. We're proud of our history. Prouder still to finance the dreams of farmers, landowners, and agribusinesses. We're Farm Credit. We're here to help you grow. Welcome back, everybody, to the Toyota School Board Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. We're, our li we're live, I guess, filming here on the dealership floor. It's cold today, isn't it, guys? It is cool. It's yeah, good football weather, though, isn't it? I don't understand that football weather. I don't understand that cold football weather. I love it when it's warm. <laughs> I mean, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, it's wet as much. I mean, this time of year, though, in the fall, you think cool weather, you think football. You mean uh, you like that 110 look. degree on the, on the turf? Yeah. <laughs> but I, brother, I believe me. I just don't like it when, it's, when you're hitting your hands and frozen. Sun, sun you know, your hands <laughs> bouncing off the turf and it's after like ice. You're hitting. I mean, you know, it's tough, man. It's cold. In between, in between. There you go, 75. Before exactly. the break, we talked about a, a surprise. Jesse, you mentioned a surprise about Austin beating Colquitt County 38 to 36 last Friday night in a region 16A. Very important matchup. 
this sets up a huge setup now coming into the final two weeks <clears throat> for Colquitt County, the team we cover down here, the Packers. They may not make it to the playoffs. Wow. This is the first time in three years they may not make it to the playoffs. Well, I think they will. They only need to win one game. They're going to beat Camden County. They, right. they, they, they play coffee. But they coffee. got cooks. No, they, they, mean coffee. Coffee. they got coffee. Right. But I think they'll beat coffee. You think they'll beat I coffee? I think they'll beat coffee. And then mm -hmm. they have Camden County. Mm -hmm. uh, you think they're going to beat Camden? No, I don't think they'll beat Camden. But all yeah. they do, be, they they do just is beat coffee. Win. And I think they can beat Coffee County to get into the they playoffs. Can, they can beat Coffee, but Coffee's playing very well right crazy. now. You know, they the only two teams that have come close to beating Lowndes or have a chance to beating Lowndes was Coffee and Coffee County this year. Lowndes has blown everybody else out until this Friday Lowndes night. Lowndes is the top. Right. You got the top tier teams now. Right. You got Lowndes and Camden County. Right. And you got everybody else. Right. But the, the last two spots, playoff spots now, are up between Valdosta, and, and Coffee, Coffee, and now Coffee County. Mm -hmm. so, so that's three quality coffee's teams. Out. Big time. Coffee's, coffee's out, baby. Well, coffee's, coffee's out. out. Coffee's out. <laughs> coffee's out. out. Coffee's done. <laughs> coffee's done. <laughs> but Valdosta still has Brunswick to play. They'll probably yeah, be win Brunswick. that one. That's but they have win. coffee to play after that. But they'll need one to get in also. That's right. Both of them need one to get in. So coffee gets to play spoiler twice? Yes, they can play the spoiler <laughs> twice. And coffee plays Coffee County and, of course, Valdosta there, too. So coffee's in the rough spot right now. Yeah. Right. If coffee wins one there, I mean, whoever wins the hits, wins this week is in. So both of them, Coffee and Moultrie, is in a, in a rough spot right yes. now. Yes, yeah. yeah. And then Valdosta well, is too. Those three, are by, those three teams are biting for the final two spots in Region 1 6A, so it's going to be a fun weekend. Of course, the game of the week in Region 1 6A, probably the game of the, of the South. I mean, Lowndes and Camden County this week at, in Valdosta. I mean, this is so big, ESPNU's got it this week, this Friday night. That's a oh, wow. So, <laughs> big game happening here in South Georgia between Camden County and Lowndes. We already know that those two teams, one and two, in the region already, no matter what. This is Lowndes' last game. Camden County's got to come here to Valdosta this week, go home, and then come back to Colquitt County in Moultrie next week, the week after. So they've got a little traveling to do the final two games, but they've been they've been in this situation. Before. You know, I think those are the best two teams in the state right now. Oh, don't question. And the thing is, if they, you know, after this, they get lucky enough to get in two different brackets. They will. Then I think they have a chance to play each other again in the, the dome. championship. And that would make for a good championship you know, game. So I think they're mm -hmm. a very good team. They'll play in the dome, a rematch for this game right here in Region 16A for the region championship. Could be the state championship game, a preview to it to see what happens. So it could be Alabama LSU all over again. <laughs> Ooh, you like that, didn't you? Uh, Just raised his eyebrows there. I like yeah, that. You got uh, yeah, attention. I like that because you're probably thinking, man, there's a chance that LSU so and know, Alabama can play again. So yep. you, don't, you don't think Moultrie gets to the championship? I just don't think they uh, should. I mean, can they? They can look up and get there, but it'd be luck. Well, I mean, they, have, they haven't been consistent. They're, they're not, they don't year. have the consistency. You Let's be on their last yeah, two I games. Be, uh, you know, might not be lucky. It might be like the 92 Jackets. Uh, lose a few at the beginning and then find their we footing. We lost more than a few. But that's not what they're well, doing. You, know, but <laughs> five, you find your footing. And went to the championship. Right. Mm -hmm. They haven't found their footing. They just got smacked yeah. by Van Austin. Yeah, they lost their footing. In the the, the, the difference is, the 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 they're not getting better every week. Yeah, they're not getting better. Actually, getting, to me, they're getting worse every week. I'm trying to throw a ball no, at the most. I'm trying to throw a ball at the most. I'm trying to throw a ball at the most. I'm trying to throw a ball at the most. So, you know, done, so now Packers are the team. I'm just trying to, you know, throw a ball to the it, it surprised me because the way they started out, I didn't think they would be at this point where they're at right now. You might need some Band-Aids for jumping on that bandwagon. Yeah. Oh, I'm not jumping on it. Because you're going to scrape your knees up. Yeah, you're going to take a beat, hey, yeah. I, uh, take a beat no, on this I, one. I figured that they would be sitting. Hey, you know, you know what Parsons says to tell me? This, uh, at this point. Parsons says, say no when to say when. You better let it go to say when it's done. That rule. Mm -hmm. Beginning of the season, we both thought that, though, I, didn't yeah, we? Well, I, I didn't. Know, I got to go I'm on Jesse's side on this one. You know, at the beginning of the season, I thought they But now you're at the end of the season. Off. You ain't on that. Now he's not on it anymore. He's, 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 he's not reality sets here. He won't let it go. I'm not, see, that's I'm not on it There's nothing wrong with being at the beginning of the season when you don't know. You know, but last you week, know. Last week in Brunswick, they were down 14 nothing before the popcorn was even finished popping. Last week in Brunswick, they had to come back and win that game in the fourth, second half. Mm -hmm. This week, they throw two interceptions in the first quarter before the fans even got warm Friday night. Wow. They're down 14 nothing at the first quarter. They can't. They had. They were just not able to come back against a better Valdosta team than Brunswick. Yeah, I, Brunswick was the week before. Yeah, I mean, you, you're Brunswick. looking at what was it at half? Like 21 to seven, 28 to seven. Yeah. 21 seven. <clears throat> was it one quarterback? <clears throat> they go back to. The oh, they went back the and forth, and I'll tell you about it here in a second. So, oh, but uh, Mobley, you mentioned quarterbacks. Mobley throws two interceptions. Cole Seagraves throws three. Woo. They were competing with each other. I'm telling you, they did I, I not have good games at all. <laughs> Not six turnovers in all for the uh, week before in Brunswick. They got six turnovers this week, too. Wow. The turnover bug is killing them. And the interceptions just absolutely destroyed them. 
against uh, Val Austin. Val Austin just sat back and picked, you know, just read the quarterback's eyes. And, you know, when you got quarterbacks like this that are struggling right now, <coughs> what's the first thing they do? And you're the defensive back. What's the first thing you're looking for in a quarterback who's struggling a little bit? Me as a defensive back? Yeah. You look at he, he's kind of telegraphing his throws a little bit, so you're seeing where he's throwing. Oh yeah, I mean if that's right, if, if that's his key. I mean, so I'm just most times it's just lost. Trying confidence. to force it. Yeah, it's lost. Com- uh, trying to do too much. Right. You know, if you got a team that's not winning and you, you go and he think he's got to do it for him, mm-hmm. and sometimes they just just try to do too much. But you love to play mm-hmm. against a team like that. Sure. A DB. I mean, first thing you look at, look at it, man, how many interceptions did he throw? Well, he threw five last week. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I yeah. Yeah. this week. That's right. <clears throat> yeah, but most interceptions at this level are off a of natural ability from the players because they're not actually being taught like you were taught. Oh, no, no, they're not game planning. Uh, why game planning? Simple. He's telegraphing it. When he does this, he does that. That's not being taught. Right. Why they're not game planning? Well, at the level there, I yeah, guarantee you, Motra now, Motra put a little more emphasis than the average team. But I was putting more emphasis than the average team. That's why these guys are elite teams because they are putting emphasis uh, almost like they do in college and NFL. Because I heard the regimen that they use over there, they actually practice in the morning in yep. Macaulay County. Oh, okay. yep. You know, so they do a little more study than the average team does. Yep. That's why they play a lot better than the average team. Right. Yep. So we invited kids from all over South Georgia and North Florida to come here to Thomasville Toyota, brought the TV cameras and let them roll. They had a ball. Check this out. Where you drive home happy. Thomasville Toyota, the happy place. Thomasville Toyota, the happy place. Where you drive home happy. Southwest Georgia Oil Company, located in Bainbridge, Georgia, operates under the trade name Inland. The goal of Inland is to be the largest independent oil company in the tri-state area of Georgia, Florida, and Alabama. Moving quickly toward that goal, Inland serves the local area in numerous ways through its distributors, Sammy's on the Faithful Highway, the Inland Store on West Chowell Street, and in Donaldsonville on Highway 84, the Self-Service Island on Calhoun Street. All you need is an Inland fuel card and the Inland Piggly Wiggly in Cairo. At Inland, we are proud to serve our local communities in Southwest Georgia. You talked about Bainbridge. You talked about their defense. Not too much they had to do the other night, did they? Not at all. Just uh, get a bunch of the north side. They click it. I'm telling you, now, this is a team that could be clicking at the right. And we said this. We said yep. this might be the team that they need this week to get that confidence up. Right. You know, that can help them the rest of the season. And hey, they they they, they ran for 500 and something yards. 520. 540. I mean, hey, okay. and that's what they needed to do. So maybe they're clicking now. 48 to seven yeah. over Northside Columbus last week. The Bearcats are rolling oh, good Columbus, here. Oh, they play. They played Dothan this we week, said. kind of an off week mm-hmm. coming we into said it. They did what they need to do to a team that, right, that doesn't have. But that, that uh, touchdown uh, for that touchdown came in the air, right? For the north side? Yes, 28 yes, yard it touchdown pass. End. It was actually late in the third quarter. So, but that, you know, <laughs> the, a lot of the second teamers were in and stuff like that. So, a lot of getting a lot of playing time. But uh, still, seven points to a, you know, pretty good Columbus team. I, I, I don't know. They, they've kind of mm-hmm. gone down a little bit this year. The team. That's surprising. Everybody that I didn't think would come alive here is Harris County. Right? Yeah. Oh, and four. Yeah. Harris, they won four straight. Mm-hmm. Harris County goes they went four in the, you know, the preseason, so to speak. Now they're four and oh in the region. Probably they beat Lee County 35 31 in another heartbreaker. That, that wasn't a County. shocker. Beat Lee County? I, I thought it was. Yeah, I, I told y'all this was going to beat Lee County. Was. Yeah, he did. I, I said right here, told all oh, y'all he, they would beat Lee did. County. Lee County is not for real. They're not a real deal. Yeah, uh, imitators. I'm telling you, they won a couple of games that we never teams we never even heard of. We Don't went out there Roger. and they put on a, a and, and, and they scored with all these points in the fourth quarter after Central was up, ever how many? And yeah, they played a decent mm-hmm. game, you know. But defense, they didn't play any defense, you know, none whatsoever. I, I like Lee County team, but you you give me validity to what I said when we was in Lee County. I mm-hmm. asked when they were facing Central, was it because of the schedule that they had played and they hadn't seen mm-hmm. this type of uh, team in Central or? I guess Central and Harris County, they hadn't seen that type of uh, opponent yet. So, well, that question so, was Harris so, County. So, but their Harris offense County. still put up the points. Yeah, offense is potent. Though, Regardless right? of yeah. when they yeah, scored the points, they still put up the but points. It yeah, takes potent. both sides of the ball. And the offense is potent, but Bainbridge's right. defense it takes both is, sides is of the ball. just as good. It takes the both sides of the ball, and, 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 and Bainbridge's and offense is not going to show up. Bainbridge, baby. That's not, you do not need to be there your strength. Bainbridge's offense is not going to show up, and that's going to be the problem. The defense is going to play a great game for but Lee County is going to score just enough points to win that game. Yeah, and they're going to be Harris County, too, and they didn't. And, and you, say, you say that their defense is their strength. You're right. 
their front I seven. Y'all, their front right. seven hey, is their yeah, strength. I told y'all they Lee gave up 245 yards playoff. in the air against East Gasson. I told y'all Lee Cattle might not even make the playoff. You still got a Columbus team that might knock them off. And you know that'll be bad. Yeah, that'll be real bad. That'll be real bad. That'll be real bad. Lee but Lee I think Lee they're going to be there. I think Lee County got to be there. If it do, it's fourth place. Lee County be there. If it do, it doesn't matter. You get to play the next season. It does matter because that's your setup. You want to be first tier. You don't want to be second tier. But one of Yeah, you want to be playing right. You want to. It matter when you're in. No yeah. matter how you get in. <laughs> so, but good game for uh, Bainbridge again. Terry Lewis, 15 carries, 254 yards. He scores three times. Terry Lewis is back after his little uh, punishment that he had two games ago. So, uh, but he's back. He's doing, uh, he did well this game. Damian Bowie also at 134 okay. yards, 16 carries and two now. touchdowns okay. as well. Yeah, he did. And uh, he boys back. Isaiah Brown. And Tremaine McCray both scored for Bainbridge. So good all around. They had, they had a lot of good uh, versatility this week. They only threw one pass the whole game. So I don't know about being versatile. But uh, oh, his thing is, you know, his thing is yeah, not going to throw it. He'll it. We're not going to throw it unless we have to. Yeah, you don't have to be versatile. Uh, continue doing what you're doing until the other Do team will. force you right. Right. to come out of it. Hey, no yeah. question. Like Roger says, don't you know? If you ask a question, if they don't answer it, you keep asking. Keep asking. Keep going. That's Roger's deal. Sorry, Roger. That's a Rogerism. That's a Rogerism. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, Cat, uh, Central boys had a good night the other night. Fifty-two nothing over Hardaway, which I thought would be a little bit tougher matchup, but I guess it wasn't. Uh, Central's getting ready to uh, play. They're off next week. They've got the Harris County coming in uh, next two weeks for the region championship. So that's going to be a good game. But they got off next week. So they didn't look too impressive coming off an off week against Bainbridge. No, they, they didn't. They, they were a little rusty, but they still pulled it out. Rusty, and they played against a very good Bainbridge yeah, team that night. They did. Bainbridge, Bainbridge came out and played. Right. Right. No uh, I mean, Bainbridge had off week also, if I'm, if yes, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, so they did. So I just think they're, more, they're better prepared than Central was. Central now 8-1 and one overall, 4-0 right. oh in the region. Months. Again, we talked two weeks ago. Two weeks from now, they play Harris County in Thomasville for the region championship. They're off next week. So Harris County's got a little tune-up at Hardaway before they come down here to Thomasville uh, th- uh, next Friday. So... But uh, they rolled it up pretty good. Defensively, five takeaways. You got to be proud of that, Jesse. Oh, yeah. Jesse's the takeaways. I don't say turnovers, but That's they took it away five times. They had 414 yards oh, rushing. Yeah. Adam Choi scores three times. Coleman is in there now. Shaquille Coleman. He's taking over for. Uh, well, they both William, Tim Brown. Well, Tim. No. Tim but Tim uh, Burrow, oh, uh, oh, Cooksey did not play. Cooksey did not Cooksey play. did not play. Oh, he didn't play? No, no they he held him out with his ankle. did not play okay. this week. Yeah. They held him out for, okay. from his leg injury or his ankle, whatever he had. But uh, Coleman steps in for him. He scores two touchdowns. Your boy Tim Brown Tim is Brown. still acting up a little bit. Yeah, Tim, he's one yeah. rushing TD, one passing TD from Choi. So Tim Brown had a great game. And also, um, James Davis added a touchdown in the fourth, fourth quarter. So congratulations to the uh, Yellow Jackets. Uh, they had a good game. Uh, Hardaway's uh, head coach, his, he, I read uh, somewhere where he had a little gripe about we only had three days to prepare for, for the Yellow Jacket offense. I mean, but whose fault is that? That's his fault. Yeah. Would they play Monday night or something or Tuesday night? I don't recall what. Uh, I know the quote was, we only had uh, three days to prepare for that type of offense, for that running style of offense. Well, mm. They haven't played Bainbridge yet? Harris? Who, Harris? No, Hardaway. Oh, Hardaway? Oh, Hardaway? Yeah, Hardaway played that yeah. already. Now, who are you talking about they had three days to prepare for? For Thomas County. For Thomas County. Who, who said that? Hardaway's that's what, coach? No, that's what, uh, I'm sorry, that's what, um, yeah, Hardaway's coach. They only had three days to prepare for, for Thomas County. But they played Bainbridge already, right? Yeah. Then they, um, should've be, they, should've they should be familiar with that. Right. Yeah, they should be familiar with it. I just say, you know, there's some central coaches, I should say they, they should get on their knees every night and pray because they can reach in their Right. Bag of tricks and tricks pull out a Coleman. <clears throat> right. And then uh, Tim Brown. can go down and they can pull out a Tim Brown. Hey, with that kind of talent, man, that kind of depth, I didn't know it was just, And they have a good system. And I have talked to Pilcher about this system. I asked him, you know, because I asked coaches, you know, why do you run the Veer? And people say they run the Veer because it's the simplest offense that you can run and make the fewest mistakes and still have positive yards. Positive yards. They say you can okay. have guys that, that don't really know the assignment but still have positive yards. And, and, you know, so I think it's great for the kids. If you find talent and put them in there, not only do they make positive jobs, they turn into a big yeah, place. Yeah. Right. And that's kind of what Torres and the guys yeah. are starting to do. This is so easy. Shopping from home, from your office, from your phone at thomasvilletoyota.com. Shop for brand new Toyotas or look at hundreds of pre-owned vehicles. Get approved in seconds with one click. 
and during business hours, live chat with one of our internet specialists. So shop easy at the happy place, ThomasvilleToyota.com. Thomasville Toyota, where you have home happy. Sunbelt Trophy on East Jackson Street is your one-stop shop for all your celebration needs. Now, just for high schools, check out our sister company, DiscountVarsityAwards.com, where you'll find amazing discounts on beautiful full-color awards custom designed for your school. Check us out at DiscountVarsityAwards.com or call 229-228-1187. Only at Sunbelt Trophy in Thomasville. Welcome back, everybody, to the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota, Bobby Latmore, Myron Guyton, Jesse Small and Chris Guyton here today to talk about last week's Week 10 here in Southwest Georgia High School football. And we're up to Cairo right now. Cairo having a – they got to squeak by a little bit here last Friday night against a pretty good America Sumter team that was out for something here last Friday. Yeah, I mean, it was tough for a start. To start. <coughs> I mean, Cairo's kind of been just rolling along offensive and defensive. And to see a team actually come out and make it rough in the first half was shocking. You know, I mean, it was a nine-point game. Uh, at the end of the day, but still early on, yep. I mean, it was tough for them. It just lets them know that you're not going to roll through easily on every game. You got to prepare and you got to be ready for anything that comes up. So but, a squeak is better than losing, so hey. But it also showed with them play, having to play the way they played, it showed that they had already faced some adversity with all the A's that they faced before that. Exactly. And, and they kept playing hard and they, and they came out on top. Yeah. I mean, they've, they've, had, they've been tested. K Road, no doubt, has been tested oh, yeah. all year. So when they got to the region, they're kind of floating, they're kind of cruising through it right now. They, you know, they're going away too up there that last Friday night. That's a long trip. Yes. And that's into a the tough abyss. place to play into America's up there. So, you know, Cairo survives up there 29 to 20 over uh, America's uh, America something. something or so. But, you know, the, the, the makers led 27-26 late into the fourth quarter. Um, America's woke up, coming back scoring 20 point, or 14 points on the serve makers, making it 27-20 with a couple minutes left. Defense stops Cairo. America Sumter's defense stops Cairo. They have to punt. Backs up um, uh, the Panthers all the way to their four-yard line. And I've been getting his name wrong for the past couple weeks, and I'm sorry, Ernest. Ernest Battle, who's back for Cairo, the defensive end that was hurt. He's back now, played the last two games. And he got sacked the quarterback in the Panther quarterback in the end zone for safety making it 29 to 20, which gave a little bit more cushion for Cairo. So good job by the defense. Plus, special teams again, fellas, block punt, scored for a touchdown again for Cairo in this game. Yeah, everybody's doing their job. Yeah. I mean, that's what you need going into the, exactly. to the playoffs. You need to show that every facet of your game is capable of doing their job. And right now, I mean, Cairo is doing, they find every way possible to win. I mean, they blocked two punts against Bainbridge and they stopped trying to go after I didn't him understand in that, game. that one at all. They block, you know, they're blocking punts every game. I mean, I would go after the guy. If I had that success, yeah. there's no question I would put so much pressure on a exactly. punter that he knew I was coming. Now, whether they hold, I don't know why they hold back or not, but man, I'd be going after that thing every time. Yeah, well, I think they hold him back yeah. now because they had such big leads. I mean, this is the mm -hmm. first time against Americas mm -hmm. that it's been a tight game in the last four or five games. So they really had a, a reason they block, to. No, they blocked the punt every game. Oh, every really? game they have blocked. And as far as I can go, I have to go back and look, but I think they have blocked the punt in every game. Wow. Okay. Close, so. not close. A win, a win is a win, whether you get whether you win by 27 points or right. get beat 1-0 to zero like we did when we played in, uh, <laughs> back in the day. Well, Cairo's got a good matchup this weekend, a very tough one going up to Monroe in Albany at Hugh Mills. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> no, we were talking about uh, when we was playing. Uh, we, 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 we got to beat 1-0. One at homecoming. One zero. Homecoming, one not zero. penetration. That's when they had about uh, penetration. No one can score and they, they, actually, they won about zone. penetration, so they ended up with one point. <laughs> so I, think they, one I think they got one yard deeper than we did into the huh? We didn't even check and see if that happened any other time in history. I don't think it has. One to zero. One, one to zero. zero. Mm -hmm. At homecoming. 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 Was this not a baseball game? It would have been the playoff. Yeah. <laughs> that kept us yeah. on the playoff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Yeah. But Cairo, they're going 4 0 in the region right now. They're obviously ahead of everybody. They got a big matchup, like I mentioned, Monroe in Albany this week. Monroe's waiting for them up there. They have, they're three and one right now. That's so Albany team. Albany we team. keep sending these Albany teams. The tornadoes up to you. I'm trying to build it up. It's a good game. So we'll see. I think I think they really fly through it. I think they go undefeated in the region. Win the region, host the first couple of playoff games, and we'll see how they go from Are there. Are you saying they're going to take the air out of the tornadoes? Ooh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. That's, that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. Well, the, you know, there's a couple of writers up there for the, in the Albany newspaper up there that's, you know, 
Emmanuel Bird, who is the quarterback for Monroe, and he's a very good kid. Don't get me wrong, he's a very good athlete, but he's the next second coming of Christ or something up there because he's going to beat Cairo on his own win. I said, well, Cairo's got, like you guys had mentioned, everybody's doing their job right now. They're playing well as a whole team. Defense is working, special teams is working, so one guy is not going to beat this team. <laughs> so You sure their defense is not averaging more four points per game than uh, Monroe's offense? <laughs> Maybe. They may be. I have no idea. I have to go back and look. I know they're, they're, they're <laughs> Their defense beating. are putting up points. They're putting up points. Special teams. Exactly. I mean, look at that as defense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they scored again this week, so there's more points there. So, yeah, I mean, they're, they're outscoring a lot of the teams in their region. Can right I vote now. for them for offense over the year? You might have to. <laughs> they, might be on the, they might be on the offensive award ceremony. <laughs> yeah. The whole defensive team from Cairo. So we'll see about that. Yeah. <laughs> Tom PJ. Yeah. <laughs> Thomasville's off last week, but Pelham played, and man, I think. They no, you mean Pelham to, showed up? I think they just need to kind well, of Pelham circle the wagons right now and call, call it a year. They got two more games, unfortunately, but uh, they play Cook and then they play Thomasville here in the final two weeks of the season. But they lose to Barry in 21 to 7. <laughs> Right, last you. Friday night at home, which is even worse. I'm, so, I'm uh, saying that in the last two games, Pelham will have a streak of two. Uh, more losses. Mm-hmm. Well, they've lost. Yes. Now that, that, <laughs> puts them, that, that puts Pelham right now. They're 1-7, they're and seven, I believe, right now. With two and they lost to a team to that, was, uh, that finished at 500? They lost yeah. to Baconton. That's they won, right. They yeah, that's the only team they beat in. <laughs> they beat Baconton. First game of the year, but they yeah. lost. They reeled so, off seven straight after that. Bakington so. just wasn't ready at that point. That's right. I like yeah. to see him yeah. make it up now. I don't know if they can do that. I don't <laughs> know if they can do that. <laughs> moving on. We're, we're moving on. Let's go to the Region 1A, talk about this region, who's very, very tight coming down to the final two games. And we'll talk about this here in a little bit about the power ranking as well. But Seminole County beats Randolph Clay 39 to 12. Yeah. Okay, I was like, yeah, you'd be looking at the wrong score. Good, they had a good I'm album. just looking at what he sent me. Okay. No, you're yeah. looking at the wrong, Dan. Oh, okay. You got to look at from left to right. What you got? You yeah. don't know? Yeah, I'm just trying to show Chris, see if Chris, he got the right sheet. Oh, Chris. did I look at the wrong one? Chris, you didn't print off half your see, stuff. See, the score didn't come up. Okay, oh, see, it, yeah. Okay, it was right. a good sheet. So, yeah. okay. so you're reading the right. Yeah. Your column didn't score out. So, so. who won that? Right. Okay. 30 didn't come up. 39, 39. to 30. Randolph. Oh, I see. It, it placed so the nine underneath. You excited, didn't you? Yeah, see Roger Lewis. Roger Lewis. Well, that's what it was. About that what? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Seminole County did right. not lose against Randolph Clay. They won against yeah, Randolph Clay. But, we, but we actually picked Seminole, though, right? We yes, picked we Seminole, did. yes. Miller County beat uh, Stewart County 33-6, to and Mitchell County beat Calhoun County 42-14, to which sets up the region championship coming down here to the final two weekends Miller here County. in Region 1A. Our game of the week this Friday night, fellas, Miller County at Seminole County, both undefeated here in Region 1A. It's going to be a good game. Any pillaging? Man, give me a lot of pillaging. We get to see Miller <laughs> oh, County yeah, yeah, again yeah. to see how they've been playing. Miller County's now 8-1 and one right now. This is their final game of the year coming into this game. So if they win this game, they'll be 5-0 and oh in the region. Region champs, an automatic bid to the playoffs. Yeah. You so, said, who they playing? Seminole County. Yeah. Ooh, you know, Miller County got that one. You don't know, man, because we saw Miller County. I've been picking Miller County all year. Then we saw Miller County against Mitchell County, and it was just an ugly game. I mean, but they were you, down big time. But you, I never would have thought they would have won that game like won that game. But you've also seen Seminole. Yeah. Right, and I thought Seminole was terrible. <laughs> I thought Seminole was terrible. You're right. You've also I seen like, Seminole. I thought was terrible. I think you Rod, you got me picking these guys. You're right. Yeah. I thought they were terrible too. But I tell you what, I talked to their coach. I had a chance to talk to their coach when you and Roger was playing the other night, Friday mm-hmm. night. And, man, he is a, a, a power guy. I mean, he's a good guy to talk to about football. Yep. And he made me feel like, you know. You wanted to be a Seminole fan. Right. Yeah. He, he, yeah. Pumped, yeah. Like, he pumped me up. He had yeah. me pumped up. Because you look at the juniors. Those are the, the junior varsity team yep. that yeah. Bacon was playing against. Yeah. And those are some nice sized kids. And these are, these are little you. guys. These yeah. are little guys. You yeah. know, you should see the other guy. You know, I'm thinking, man, yeah. I thought I saw y'all play. <laughs> y'all were that good. Same size. I saw yeah. You. yeah I, and I saw, he kind of pumped I me up. You, yeah. I saw you talking to him. You were kind of goo goo eyes. Yeah. I know. I thought it was serious. You're smoking. Because you're killing me to smoke. I'm like, Ingram, <laughs> Ingram can do that to you, though. Look at the Roger. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he's the only coach that knows smoking a cigarette at halftime, right yep. in the middle of the crowd. Oh, yeah. He's... I mean, all the players around him, he's smoking a cigarette. Yeah. Oh, I know yeah. you'll do that, coach. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, by the way, on your win, Jesse. Although oh, you weren't there. He wasn't even there to yeah, receive you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're going to get to that. I'm sorry. We'll, yeah. we'll edit that out. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. But, um, <laughs> Seminole and Mitchell. Mitchell's off this week. They play each other the week after. So, Seminole's got two tough games 
here today. They, they lose. No, Friday they have night. two games. They lose Friday night. Their playoff hopes could be ruined because Mitchell and Seminole are going to play. You know, based on if oh, Seminole man. loses, if Mitchell wins against Seminole, Mitchell's still not going to get in because oh, power ranking for yeah, Seminole falls. Ranking. So it's it's a oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's I think whoever wins this game between Miller and Seminole are the only is the only team representing Region One coming into the playoff scheme this year, okay, and that's going to upset some teams because. You know, Seminole's all right, Mitchell's all right, no telling how far they can go in the playoffs, but you lose that opportunity here the first round. So if Mitchell, if Mitchell beats Seminole, Seminole don't get in? Yeah. There's a chance they don't. It doesn't jack, oh, okay. There's a chance they power rating. Power rating. Okay. Unless they say the rating's so high well, that both of them move up, you know, but the chance well, of that well, is. Well, Mitchell, Mitchell will take Seminole, so, hey, I guess this is. Let me tell you, let me tell you how bad the power rankings are right now. Let me tell you how this is working out. Before this weekend, before Friday, Miller County was at 7, mm -hmm. Seminole was at 17. Mitchell was at 21. They all three of them won. Miller moved down two to number nine. They won, but they moved down two because of the team that they played. Right. wasn't very ranked very high. They didn't get many points for the win. Seminole moved down for the same purpose, down to 20. And Mitchell County moved all the way down past, I think they're 26 right now because of the teams that they're playing are not very powerful teams. So is there a chance that Miller loses to Seminole Seminole and still don't get enough power ranking no. to move in? Is there a exactly, chance that there's a chance that could happen, yes. Oh, that no, 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 no. I'm sorry, let me take that back. If Seminole wins, they're region champs. Oh, region, so region, cha automatic the region champ auto. is an automatic okay, bid. Okay, I was going to say, that would be really yes. messed up. If, yes. you know, oh, God. The region champ is the automatic bid into the 16th. <laughs> so and that may be the only reason why they get in, because you're right, they may not have the power ranking points, but they need to win this to get in. They that's, really do, because the only, play, the only team that's, that's going to represent is the winner of this game right here. That's yeah. tough. That's yeah, that's that very tough. tough. So Seminole's record is It's right. very tough. The Seminole won, what, about three, four games? But they won all the regions. They won all the I understand. It's a shame that you can lose so many games and still get... That's hey, Harris County. Harris County. There's, 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 there's nothing wrong with that. The Yellow Jackets. There's nothing wrong with that. The same thing. <laughs> Harris County. Four Harris score. County. Not at four. They won four straight. Harris County. Fighting for the championship. They're in the driver's seat right now. Yeah, but that's they're, uh, the they're better. Than well, they're somebody. in the passenger seat. I'm sorry. <laughs> in the passenger Harris, seat. Harris Harris County's in the passenger seat. So, <laughs> tell you what, let's take a quick break and we'll talk about region breakdown. But before to go to break, Jesse, congratulations. Last game for Baconton, they beat Seminoles JV team. Now, what you got to do in the fourth right. quarter, that trick play I ran the fourth quarter to win it? What did y'all do? I don't remember. <laughs> you don't remember? <laughs> you don't remember Jesse, that trick Jesse play? Left. You were so excited. Oh, you, you, were there, up this. you were no, there. I, got, I had a call. I had to uh, go take care of some business. Uh, yeah. Did the game? You got him to hey, He got him yeah. up 13 Well, my seven. wife was there, remember? Oh, yeah, of course. That's right. That's right. So you got to blame it on her. She let me know. He <laughs> got him to 13 to 6. If they it, missed it, it, job it was 13 to 6. He got into the third quarter, and he said, you know what, I, these guys can handle it, and he had to go do something with his wife. I give him credit for that, but Roger stayed for the whole thing, and that's the reason why Seminole lost, because Roger stayed there. The <laughs> so we're going to leave that alone right now. Uh, we'll come back. Was it Roger's play calling? Huh? Yeah. Was it Roger's play calling? Yeah. Are you going to show some tape during the show of that game? You got to show the tape there to Jesse and Roger. When Jesse over there talked to the player, and then Roger ran over and talked to his player. On the way to the break, we'll talk a little bit about it, but, you know, I got a tape of Jesse talking to a player, and Roger's over there going, on the sideline, you know, and you'll see Roger here in a second. And he's looking at you like, what are you doing? So Roger gets in the face of another kid trying to talk to him a little bit, as you can see. But it, it, it was funny as oh, all. So. But, but the kid Roger was talking to was a manager, though. That yeah. didn't count. Yeah. It was. <laughs> 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 That's it. We're cutting on that one right there. We'll be back after this here on the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. <laughs> oh, Roger's going to be mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be Roger, man. Yeah. Thomasville Toyota, the happy place. I'm ready to switch over to Farm Bureau Auto Insurance. Great. Wait, my old insurance agent is offering me a safe driver discount if I stay. We got you down for that. And a multi-line discount. That too. You know, some insurance companies don't give you your discounts until you try to switch, whereas we give you all the discounts you qualify for automatically. Awesome. Done. <laughs> Hey, hi. Your old agent? Yeah. Awkward. Real service, real people. That's Farm Bureau Insurance. Welcome back, everybody, to the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. Bobby Latmore here, Myron Guyton, Jesse Small, and Chris Guyton, the whole crew again. 
That's fun when everybody's here. But it is. We have good times every week, though. I'll give you that much. No matter who's here, we have a really good time. Gentlemen, this segment right here, we're talking region breakdowns right now. Again, we talked a little bit about it during as we talked about the games that happened Friday night. But this week, it's all about placement in the region. This week in Region 16A, the big game of the year all over probably the south of the southeast United States, Camden County, at Lounge to get that region championship right there to see who goes. And both teams are going to be one and two. The question mark is who's going to be three and four right now, Valdosta, Coffey, or Colquitt County? Colquitt County, and if Colquitt County beats Valdosta the other night, they're in for sure, no matter what. Mm. But now they're, scr they're scrambling around for their lives because they play Coffey this week, and Coffey's playing very good football right now. Coffey right now overall is five and three. They're identical to Colquitt County. Everything's identical. Two and two in the region, five and three overall. Mm. All three teams, Valdosta, Colquitt County, and Coffey. So between those three teams, two go to the playoffs. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here. Any comments? No? Nope. You know I have some comments. I'm trying to yeah, wait, yeah, wait and let you guys talk because you know I'm hey, coffee's out. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go, with, go with Myron. I think, uh, I think coffee comes in this week on a D, like decaf instead of the Colombian. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. Wow. Yeah, 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 I agree with Joe decaf. You're right. Decaf. Yeah. That's yeah. right. They, they, and they, they're going to need all the energy they, they, they can muster up. I'm telling you against the Colgate County team, the guy to get in the playoffs and knowing this is the way in. Packers have it because I think they were home. I think the they're next home. two games, I think they also play at Cam and Cam County. They go to them too. Yeah. Yeah, but I so. think this game against Coffee, they need to be at home because if they're away, I don't think they do it. I think they do it because of the I don't think it makes a difference. Pitch. I think, they, I think their so. team where their coach really uh, dig down, he gets things done. I mean, you look at them after they lost to, to, to Lounge. They came back the next week and tried to make an example out of Tiff County. You know, I think he's going to respond and say, hey, guys, you know, we lost a game last week against the Valdosta State team that mm -hmm. I felt like we should, I mean, Valdosta team that we should have beat. And we got to win this game because we're going to get into the playoffs. Like I said, he's a very positive speaking guy. Because we're going to get into the playoffs, and then we're going to show what, then what we're going to do once we get into the playoffs. We're going to win the state championship. I'm going to tell you one thing right now. He's got his quarterbacks throwing the ball to his own people this week. I promise you that, or else he'll find somebody who will. Oh, he's he's going to get that fixed. He's going to get that fixed. Guaranteed. No question about it. Oh, he ought to be running one quarterback this week. That, you know, and mm -hmm. I think that may, they may have to go to that. They got to find out who the hot hand is and stay with it. I mean, maybe they try that against Valdosta. I don't know. Um, Daniel Mobley, the junior, started the game, but Seagraves came in uh, later on after a couple interceptions. But he threw three interceptions. So mm. nobody had the hot hand the other night. So they got to find somebody and maybe just playing them consistently to find out who's going to run and just go with that, even through the playoffs when they make it. Well, you, so. you guys are saying Coffee will show up as decaf. Now, my question for you guys is, do you think it'll be a blowout win or will it be? Oh, no, no, it's going to be a close game. Okay, because I, 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 yeah, I, I think it'll be close. I, I'm going to have to go with you guys and say right. the Caucus probably going to win this. Well, it's a region right. game. Anytime you have region games, you know, anybody can show up. You know, those are region games. But I think as long as they can just get by this with a win, they're in the playoffs. Well, I'll tell you another, I'll tell you another uh, positive for Caucus County. They've been in this situation before. First year head coach for Robbie Pruitt going over to Coffee this year. These guys, this is the first time these guys have had any success at all in the past five or six years right now at Coffee. <clears throat> getting into the playoffs. I mean, they've been struggling towards the bottom of the pit here in this Region Region 1 deal here for the last few years. This is the first time they've been in this situation. They're riding a high right now. That may come down to the end of this game, whether or not they can control their you know exposure or, or, or finish it out. Colquitt's been in this situation. These kids have played in the Dome. They played last year in the playoffs. These kids know what it takes to get there and what it does. Plus, you got a coach that you talked about, Myron, that's very positive, too. I think that's the edge that Colquitt has over coffee this week. Yeah, plus, I think if you look at the guys that they've lost again, look at the guys that coffee lost again. I mean, they, they lost against the Lowndes County. That's a very good team mm -hmm. where coffee got beat up. You know, pretty good against Lowndes County. And Moultrie probably saying, guys, we're a much better team than a Coffee County team. We just got to go out there in the field and show it. Plus, we're at home. Again, a lot of positive things that's going to be in their advantage. Mm -hmm. I think they go ahead and get it done. <clears throat> It'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. It's going to be a good game. Again, we mentioned the other game, Lowndes and Camden County. That's being picked up by ESPN. That's how big this game is. You know, we're, we, we should pick it up. Well, it was funny because we were talking about the, the uh, Colgan County Camden game four weeks ago. Said, man, we should be there at the Colgan County should, Camden that's game. That's why I said we should pick we it should, up. Oh, we yeah. should do that game. We, Our we network. thought that was a game of the week. We'll cover it for ESPN. We'll be all there. Mm -hmm. We'll be the guys over there. So. <laughs> but uh, that would be fun. We're, we're going to do that here pretty soon. we got a big announcement to make next week here about the playoffs here for uh, this group right here for all of us at the Cool Channel. So we'll bring that up next week. But right now, let's go to Region 15A. You guys love this region. You've been talking about it for a while. Okay, Chris and Jesse, break. <laughs> After you, Jesse. No, no, no. Let me go through the whole schematics here. Go Central, for it. Go Central for it. coming into it 4-0. Oh. 
Mm -hmm. Week off this week, they play Harris County, who's 3-0 and of uh, region championship. They play Hardaway next week, but I think they'll get by Hardaway, be undefeated when they played Central here in two weeks on, on November 9th here in Thomasville. Big plus for Thomasville, not having to travel up to Harris County. Harris County beats Bainbridge, which Bainbridge was a good football team. Um, I, that surprised me big time. Um, they beat them every year. I, I don't know. I don't know if Harris County's got that number. But uh, these two coming down to it here in two weeks, big game here in Thomasville in two weeks. It will be a big game here in Thomasville. The Yellow Jackets will take it. But I think when it, I'm going to look ahead just a little bit and say that uh, the top finishing order, the top four teams in that region, no specific order for Myron. Uh, I'm going to say Bainbridge, maybe. No, Bainbridge will be in, Lee County will be in, Harris, Thomas County will be in. But if I have to go with a specific order, I'm going to say Bainbridge is going to be the fourth team in. So you think Bainbridge is going to beat Lee County? Lee County and Bainbridge no, play also two going to lose to Lee County. Yeah. Oh, he thinks okay. Bainbridge is going to be the last one. Is that, you said four? Yeah, yeah, four. You think Bainbridge is going to lose to Lee County? Yes, I do. <laughs> hey. <laughs> That's Chris, in two weeks. I'm not even going to get started with this has, right now. That's in two a, weeks. He has a point. But he, he has a point. You know, uh, Bainbridge has a strong front. Let's get Bainbridge. Bobby front just side. had a great point. Front side. We're going to see this week. They, then they let's see strong, how, how the they team got a strong, fall this week. They got a strong front side. Let me tell, you, let me tell you what's happened here in Region 1 5A, mm -hmm. and you can guys can, you can, you can talk <laughs> about the order, but I'll tell you who the four teams that are in right now is Central, is Harris County, is Lee County, and Bainbridge. Bainbridge with their win over Northside guarantees them a playoff spot. Lee County's already in, mm -hmm. Central's obviously in, and Harris is in. One and two is going to be Central in uh, Harris County. That's going to be one and two. Three and four can either be Lee County or Bainbridge. So that's what we'll So what they're actually playing for is who is going to be the, the exactly. whipping child for the, for the number one seed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes with that here coming up pretty soon. But uh, that's going to be fun to watch. In two weeks, we'll, we'll get it going. Two weeks, I cannot wait for that Friday night huddle in Bainbridge when we host Lee County and Bainbridge. We're also going to be covering that Harris County Thomasville game, Central game as well. So that's going to be huge here for us here on the Cool Channel. No, if if, if, if uh, Lee County went out and Harris County lose two games, then Harris County ended up at third seed. Oh, right? if Harris County loses the Hardaway. Yeah, if they lose the Hardaway. Right. Um, you know, they lost their first four games. Well, if Lee County know, so and Harris won. County. So, because um, Harris County, only, Lee County only lost one region game, so for which was to Harris County. Right. So, if they can, no, run, the, if they can run the table. Lee lost to Central. Harris County. Oh, you're right. So, they lost to Central, too. So, they two. Yeah, two. two. So, who would be? So, Harris County win the, the, the out because they beat them? No, Harris no, County the, would, be, would win out yeah. because they beat Lee County. I mean, uh, you're right, all four are, are in. It's just where they're going to finish. Right. Right. The tiebreaker. Yeah. Oh, the tie Harris first. County would come uh, uh, above Lee County because of the tiebreaker. They beat them. Yes. Okay. So, and Harris County beat Bainbridge, so they would be above them as well. So the tiebreaker is going to come into effect. Well, and it's funny, though, sometimes these seeds don't always fall to your advantage. You look at last year, uh, Thomas County, they feel like, man, you know, we should have had that top seed when Bainbridge had the top seed. Bainbridge scheduled playoffs was a lot tougher schedule yep. than, than where the Yellow Jackets should have made it to the, to the, to the final. Because, man, the team they lost to, which was Flyer Branch, was not a very good team. They mm -hmm. just had six turnovers in that right. game. You know, so sometimes you get lucky. Uh, you get a lower seed, and sometimes you get lucky. Because once that, that top seed is picked off, then, I mean, you're just playing average seeds from there yep. on. No and question. Anything can happen. That, that turnover bug will get you. That's right. We'll a little luck you. on your side. Some guys get hurt, you know, on the other side. But with uh, Harris County giving up 26 points a game, that's not good enough against Central. You, uh, you can't give up that many points against the Central, uh, Thomas County Central team good and point. expect to win. Good point. Unless you score in 35. With, with the, well, they're, 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 they're scoring 26 and giving up 26. Right. So not, it's almost like, you know, enough. right. No. So, and Central right now is give, scoring 37, giving up only 15. So that's going to be an interesting, interesting deal. Harris County's throwing the ball, <laughs> which is going to be interesting to see. They're very balanced this year. You know, none of those teams going to uh, be the Yellow Jackets. I mean, uh, it, 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 you heard that, right? They're not going to be the Yellow Jackets. That's rough. They're but it, 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 jackets, seem, it seems that every team that when they need to find an answer to something, they go to the air, and Central has not been able to find a remedy for that yet. Well, I mean, let me let me let me let me bring this up too. You know, Central's eight and one overall. Mm -hmm. They played very good teams in the beginning of the season that prepared them coming into this playoff to their region run. Right. Harris County zero oh, and four in the beginning of the season, playing the same teams that Central did. So a little bit of experience there, are getting you know on track. You know, not to say that Region One. Five, uh, five A's weak or anything, but there's a couple weak teams and they did pretty good against them. But 
I mean, they beat Bainbridge, which, you know, surprised me. But overall, Central's already been tested time in and time out. Yeah, Harris, County, Harris County got handed it to them when they played that type of caliber of football. You know, if we, if so, we play what-ifs here, mm, we'll ahead. be talking about an entirely different playoff picture if Bainbridge beats Thomas County. Oh, I'm, exactly. I mean, okay. for the order of where they're going to be at, who's going to be playing where. Right, right. But all four of those teams were in it no matter what. Northside and Hardaway just not having their year yeah. this year. They're still, they still, you know, haven't won a game in the region, so there's no way they're going to well, be in Well, you know, maybe not, Chris, because Harris knocked off Bainbridge, so you still you have some teams that's tied. be a lot more uh, parity there, right? right. But, yeah. uh, but what if, what if? Uh, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of teams started on the top and they just started winning everything. Central 81, uh, like that, but it's not. They, uh, Harris County may have lost four. And then they won the four, but it's not where you start at in this thing. But it's where you, but it, but it's where you right. want your mo momentum at. And the thing is, I don't know if Central have that momentum on their defense right now. And that's what scares me about the Yellow Jackets. I just don't think their defense is where it needs to be at this time of the season. I mean, defense is usually the first thing you can build. Offense takes a little longer to come around. But, I mean, so why are they still having trouble in the secondary? You know, so that concerns me. That concerns me going to play. Because that's why, hey. I, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm hoping Central, you know, take it off. Don't they tighten and, up? Uh, but I'm hoping that they play Bainbridge. I'm hoping Bainbridge get that four spot because the four plays the first, right? Yes. Because uh, Central against Lee County again, that's a scary thing for me, man, because that offense can pass. That quarterback got pinpoint accuracy, man, and, hey. He can run the ball. Central's Central's the ball see that too. in the playoffs. Yeah. yeah Central's going to see that in the playoffs, so we'll see what happens. You know, in the last two scary. years that I've seen him play. Well, now the fourth doesn't normally football. play. play. You don't normally play that team in your region. Correct? No, 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 no. You'll no, play, you the, play the, the top from another region. Oh, region two. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Region two. When the playoffs play. start, you're playing another okay. region. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. That kind of, it's kind of scary, but play at least. We've been selling a lot of new Toyotas right here at Thomasville Toyota and getting great trade-ins like this Toyota Sienna minivan. Only $9,900. It's an 06 model, very clean. Volkswagen Passat, ladies and gentlemen, $6,900 right now. While it lasts, you better call. 50 miles per gallon Toyota Prius Hybrid, $9,900. Come on in now to Thomasville Toyota, where you drive home happy. 4G LTE has the fastest speeds. So let's talk about coverage. Based on this chart, who would you choose? Wow. <laughs> guys, take a minute. Horizon, hands down. I'm going to show you guys another chart. <laughs> pretty obvious. I don't think color matters. Pretty obvious. What's pretty obvious about it? The Verizon has the coverage. <laughs> Verizon. Verizon. We're going to go to another chart. It doesn't really matter how you present it. I tell you what. It doesn't matter how you present it. Verizon. More 4G LTE coverage than all other networks combined. Region 1 4A, yeah. nothing about. Cairo's got a test this week up in Monroe. This is for the region championship up there. Monroe 3, 4 and 1 right now. Cairo 5 and 0. Oh. That's going to be the, the, the determining factor. Westover's in there at 4 and 1 also. So Westover may be the number two team coming to this, but Cairo's got them beat because even if Monroe, if Monroe wins, Monroe will be the, the region champs. Cairo will be number two. So, but I don't see that happening. Cairo, I think, is playing really good football right now. So we'll see what happens up there. There will be pain in but Albany. Pain. But uh, Cairo's, you know, the team that we cover is gonna is running pretty good right now. Close. Huh? Oh yeah, Cairo's running no, very good. No, how, yeah, how, it's it's stacked like, up close. Yeah, the way that's but the, what's nice about it is Cairo's got the tiebreaker over everybody, yeah. except yeah. Monroe. This is why they're playing this week for the. This is for the region championship. This is this is for the whole the whole ball of wax here. So. It's going to be interesting to see how this, because Cairo's next game is against Doherty, and Doherty hadn't won a game all year. Well, I'm going to advise so. Cairo that when they go in for halftime, put their stuff on the bus. They're going to win. Put your stuff on the bus. You go straight from the field to the bus, and you get out of there. Oh, they'll you be do, fine. You do not want to be in Hugh Mills after the home oh, team loses. They're fine. Hugh Mills has been fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the last few years, they've really toned it down over yeah. there. But the, the problem is, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the teams, like, you know, from the south part of Georgia coming up, like Central and – and Bainbridge and all those teams that play up there, they bring more fans than they do the, the Albany people do, which is a little disappointing. But I think this week, Monroe, they'll have, they'll have their teams up there. They'll have a lot of people, so they'll be yeah, ready yeah. to go. Yeah, the, the offenses are going to have to uh, step up and take command of these games because Cairo's giving up 11 points per game, whereas Monroe's giving up 14 points per game. So both defenses are playing quality defense. It's just going to depend on which offense steps up and take control. Monroe's got a bit of offense. They're scoring. They're scoring a little bit right now. They're they're averaging some points right now per game. The problem is they're giving up as many points too. Monroe right now is scoring 27 points. 
giving up 14. And K Rose Cairo's scoring 27, giving up 11. That's how easy this, that's how close this is. Monroe scoring 27, giving up 14. <laughs> So we'll see. It's going to be it's going to be an interesting matchup. We'll talk a little bit about that Friday night on the Friday night huddle. I want to go into a good breakdown with that, with the teams they've already played and the, mm. the differences they yeah. score between them. I think heroes see more A's than our Monroe. Yeah, having yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just a few. Region one, two A. Unfortunately, Thomasville and Pelham are out of it based on the numbers here. So, you know. Thomasville goes up to Fitzgerald. They were off this week, but they ho they go up to Fitzgerald, which I don't think Fitzgerald is going to give up to Thomasville this week. And then so. Pelham and Thomasville will play each other for the final game of the season. So um, it, it's right now we get we got to give props to Early County. Early County, you know, a team that's just north of us that we cover a little bit. They're in the playoffs this year. Congratulations to Coach Trey Wolf up there. Now, did the they win last week? They, they, they lost, lost to Fitzgerald 17-14 on a final yeah. second field goal that didn't go through. But – they're still in the playoffs. They're two and two. Cooks two and two. Back Fitzgerald's in. four and one. Brooks County's playoffs. five and zero. Oh. Backed in the playoffs. Yep. <laughs> yeah. They backed into the play. Well, they back, they backed into it by beating. Them. They beat Thompson pretty good. Right. So early, early, wins. Wins. early wins. That one good. So early wins. But, uh, <laughs> early wins. Early, early. Yeah. Early wins. What's so early bad wins. is Thomasville's two and six, which puts them in the bottom of the bracket for the region because Barrington's three and five. So based on the overall statistics. Thomasville's, you know, right there with Pelham in the cellar in this wow. region, which I thought that that's the surprise of the whole region right there is Thomasville. I at least thought they'd make it to the playoffs, wow, but they're not so this they're year. Coming. So mm. it's a shame. But uh, they got another year yesterday. They got a lot of young kids, so we'll see how that goes. Brooks County, though, number two oh, in the yeah. state based on which poll you look at. They're, they, I'm, they're ready to run to the playoffs, man, they unless, they, yeah. unless they suffer a severe injury to some people on that team. They're going to be in that dome. But that hasn't been their, their biggest hit. Their biggest hit in the past has been coaching. They've had some, some good teams in the past. I, I mean, I always go watch when they play against Thomasville. And, you know, just one or two plays, they usually take off. But so far this year, we haven't seen that. It seems like they've been playing complete games. They yep. haven't been giving up big plays. Yep. You know, so hopefully that's changed. And hopefully they don't get in the playoffs and all of a sudden go against a little better competition. Right. So and then play. they bring those old habits back. So well, Morris the players playing. and the coaching. That's what you're saying. Oh, I'm, right saying, I'm saying the coaching. But in the past, now. they had the players. But this year, they seem to have the coaching staff. Yeah. Maurice, they Freeman, coach Maurice Freeman has been there for a couple years now, and he's really he's a, he's a former uh, college coach. It's been around the circuit for a while. He's come into Brooks County. He's done well in the past couple of years, so this is he's got a little experience going at things. So hopefully they'll turn around and maybe bring home a championship here to South Georgia here in Region 2, Region Classification 2. That'll be nice. Yep. That'll be real and nice. And they need it. it. Brooks County, anybody need it, Brooks County yeah. need it. It depends on what you get. Because me and Mara was talking earlier that uh, the talent pool of any school fluctuates like every five years. Right. You have all these gangbangers like from 92 to 96 with Chris and them, and then it lulls a little bit, mm -hmm. and then it picks up again. So it depends on when you come in and what you get and right. coaching what you got. You got to take advantage of it. You have to take advantage mm -hmm. of it big time. Every year you got to take advantage of it. So we'll see about that. Region 1A. Big region that we're covering this Friday night. Miller County at Seminole County for the region championship. Both of them are undefeated. Miller County coming in at 5-0. and Seminole's at 4-0. and This is it. Whoever wins this game goes to the, goes to the playoffs. Pillaging. Pillaging. Uh, uh, pillaging. All year uh, long. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not picking it. I'm waiting until last minute to pick mine. <laughs> I'm looking for something for shiny. So Roger will say shiny for, for the Pirates. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, those two. You had to get it in, huh? Had to get it in. Um, so, uh. But Miller and Seminole, the winner of this game is going to go to the playoffs based on the power rankings. We talked about the power rankings earlier. They fell even though they won this yeah. week. They still fell in the power rankings because of the teams are not that they're playing are not powerful themselves, so to speak. So they have to, whoever wins this game, that's going to be it. And if Seminole wins, they still, like we talked about this, Meyer, they may not have right, been the power be ranked, right. but they'll be the region, region champs, and they get an automatic buy into the into the Sweet 16, so to speak. Yeah. So Miller wins, they're automatically in because they've reached the power rankings. They'll go up playing Seminole County, so they'll be in. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And it's the top 15? Top 16. Top 16? Do it, do it like Bobby. Hi, I'm Bobby Latmore, and I'm going to tell you who's going to win that game between Miller and Seminole. One of those teams on that field that night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that. Do I do that? But how do, do, do you that? feel if you if, if going into that game? How do you feel? Whoever plays Friday night's gonna win. How do you feel if you're going into that game? You're that number 16 team, and Seminole wins. Now you get bumped out because they won the region. 
Oh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's exactly suck. what I'm saying. Yeah. But you know what, though, you got a good point there. They're nine right now this week. Yeah. And you, if you lose to Seminole, you still may have enough points to. If you may, you may bump down to 14 or 15, you still may be in it. Right. Because of who you played. Right. So. Who knows what's going to happen? But the way I've seen this thing fluctuate up and down, I mean, them losing this week, I mean, I mean, them winning, winning this week and, and dropping, yeah. that's like worse than a BCS. Yeah, but they play Randolph Clay, right? Yeah, but uh, you, you win, you got to still be congrat, you got to still be awarded for that. Not in be not in this thing. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. We didn't talk about GISA. Let's run through like GISA BCS. real quick. GISA over the weekend. Uh, Brookwood, uh, good game against Valwood, 35 to nothing. We will, that's all. We'll talk about them there. And Westwood over at SGA, 21 to 7. So new that streak, sets up. New streak. That sets a new streak. <laughs> so that sets up Valwood, who's in the region, just killing everybody. They're number one in the well, state. Everybody, but what, they didn't kill you, Westwood. Did you, did you, they, you, they, they, that was a close game. What? That was a close game. 48 to 14? What? It was 48 You sure that wasn't Roger? What you talking about? Oh, I told they barely SGA. beat. No, 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 no. I told them well, Westwood West didn't West uh, 48 to 14 last week. Game wow. Westwood. This yeah. week, this last week, Westwood beat SGA. So, what's great about this whole Roger thing. Took I, re I didn't want to talk about Brookwood's loss to Valwood, but you know what's great about the whole thing? Brookwood winning against Terrell Academy last week put them in the playoffs. They are in the playoffs for, for this year for the GISA, so good job, Warriors. Probably beat Terrell. They're two and seven right now, but they get in based on the tiebreaker right now. So we'll see what happens with that. They play Sherwood this Friday night. Sherwood's not; they haven't won in the region yet. But if the, if Brookwood loses to Sherwood, they're done. Because Terrell Academy, I, I don't know who Terrell Academy plays this weekend, but if they lose, so if both teams lose, Brookwood's in. If Terrell wins, Brookwood loses. Terrell's in. If Terrell, if Brookwood wins, no matter what, Brookwood's in. That's a lot of ifs. That's a lot <laughs> no. of ifs. A lot <laughs> so, happening, bro. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. A lot is riding on this game for Brookwood against so you Sherwood win, you're in. this week. Yep. They win, so you win, win. you're in. Yep. Brookwood, so you win, you're in. Just tell Brookwood coach, open it up, run 25 enough <laughs> to set up that pass. Throw the 12 once in yeah. a while, will you? Come on. Throw the ball. But uh, well, Who's going to be throwing the 12? Huh? Who's hey, going to be? They got a good quarterback. I know. Good I'm saying which one? Uh, Jake Piazza is doing great. Sophomore is one of my best, you know, my son's best friends. You know, they all hang, all the sophomores are all best friends, all good friends. But Piazza's done well I'm, this I'm, year. I like Piazza. I do, too. Mm -hmm. I think he's good. The only problem that with Mike that. Mike Piazza's kid. Yeah. No, not Mike Piazza. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the pizza, pizza boy, too. Yeah. But, you know, Pizza's doing a good job. I mean, he's doing a really good job. The only issue with, with this is the, the coaching staff wants him, you know, it, they haven't quite taught him enough to three-step hit. Three step go. Because when he tries to go, he looks and he tries to run a little bit. And exactly. you don't have that time because you don't have an offensive line that's no. there yet. So you only have three seconds. One, two, three, and you better throw the ball. Because you're also not, you're gonna be on the dirt, you know, face planting in the dirt with guys like Meyer and Guy who are running up the center with the safe corner blitz better, and stuff. You better get that out quick because when they say uh, when the offense is wolf done or they're changing, when they say defense. One go, go up. one guy goes out and one comes off. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a substitution. But uh, you know that's that's Brookwood's got it. They do if they beat Sherwood, they're in this week. So anything else about any of this region stuff? I know. Don't talk about it yet. I know we'll get into the Friday night huddle coming up in the two weeks. Is going to be our fun week. Townsville Toyota, the happy place. Toyota. 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 This week, anything happening this week you guys like? I can't talk about it. Can't talk about it until the Friday night huddle? State rankings right now, your Yellow Jackets are still remain, they still number five in the state, class 5A. So the one number one team 
and this and oh yeah, by the way, we got to talk about this, and I'm glad I saw this, and I, and I want you guys talked about Bainbridge playing the number one team in Region Two. Do you know who that is? Northside and Warner Robins. 